So I'm here with Elias, who's the VP of Engineering at HubSpot, and delighted to have you here. It's always a pleasure to spend time with you. So we're going to talk a little bit tonight about the future of open source survey, but I want to just back up for a second and understand a little bit about how HubSpot thinks about open source. Obviously, you have a tremendous community of users, but what about open source? How do you think about your open source usage and, and your community in open source? Well, thanks for having me here. Uh, we use, we see open source with two different lenses, right? Yeah. I think the most important lens right now is that our entire platform is built on top of open source software, right? Right. I mean, our entire stack. Yeah. I mean, we, we've been we've been looking at a technology. For example, we will use uh, Hadoop, right, for our MapReduce distributed yep. computing. We'll use Linux, obviously. Uh, we're running everything on the cloud. Uh, we'll run uh, Java, we'll run uh, all of our web services, all of our JavaScript libraries, JavaScript, uh, CoffeeScript. Our, our uh, front end uh, stack is all built on open source software. Right. right. Talking about Grunt, uh, Backbone.js, yep. uh, CoffeeScript, Haml, yep. Handlebar. So, uh, Do you use open source testing tools as well? Open, you know, we, you know, we run everything on Jenkins, yep. you know, Selenium, yep. Yep. Jasmine. It's like everything that we have is our mentality is basically you know, we always go to open source yeah. for our first solution. Yeah. Very rarely we have to, we have needed to build something else, right? Uh, to buy something else. So you're highlighting one of the most important findings of the survey this year, which is that basically we're now seeing a really strong grassroots adoption yeah. and it's the first thing people turn to. So it's open source first yeah. and then, you know, build from there. But Definitely. obviously I always think about but this. That's, that's one lens. Yeah, yeah. The so second lens the second. Is, is that we, we want to give back to the community, right? Yeah. So we've been focusing uh, some of our energy as well in open sourcing the work that we have done internally, wherever open source wasn't you know, meeting you know, the bar, and we open source our projects to make sure we give back to the community and we get to know other developers for our future growth of our team, right? Right. So we use it as, uh, we, I call it inbound recruiting, right? Yeah. Where we want everyone to know uh, what kind of technology we're building at HubSpot. So it's, it's two things, why is we consumer? Yep. And we want to be producers as well. Yep. So you're highlighting a couple of key things that come out in the survey, and it'll be interesting to see what you think of it as we announce it tonight. Um, so first of all, one is that obviously there's more and more grassroots support for projects that are not only being consumed, but now organized by vendors and also enterprises too. Right. And those enterprises are seeing the benefits, as you suggest, of actually being part of the community because it helps them recruit. Yeah. And it's a virtuous cycle because, guess what? Developers want to work on innovative things. Absolutely. And they want to contribute and give yeah. back. So is it helping you recruit? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it, when we have, it's really hard for me to, to recruit an engineer if I'm telling them that we have, we use this proprietary stack that yeah. we buy from right. this huge vendor that yeah. no one else knows about or uses, right? Yeah. Uh, we. The fact that we can stay with things that are relevant, that they're learning at school, that they're learning open source. I mean, GitHub is so you know, fundamental now, yeah, on, on everyone finding new software, new projects, that you gotta have, you gotta have the ability to attract a new candidate, right? Yeah. Uh, and we speak their language, we use the same software, we use the same project, so it's much, much easier for them to say, I wanna work in this company. Right, Both exactly. for us consuming all open source and producing it, right? So yeah. it's, it's a, it's a no-brainer for us. That's great. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the first lens, you're consuming open source. How much do you estimate it's accelerated your ability to get products to market? I mean, probably a hard thing to imagine doing it without open source, but give us a sense of how much it might have helped. Well, part of that is, is built upon our experience of, of, of open source. I've been using open source software for, you know, let's say close to 10 years, right? Right, right. And so it's like, We've, we've become very familiar. I mean, they're not, these are not necessarily projects that just started, you know, last year. Right, exactly. And so it's yeah. uh, products that, uh, projects that have, uh, have gone through a lot of development and iterations, right? And to be stable enough for us to use. Yep. Uh, so that's one part of it. But the other, I felt that, I feel that we, we have created um, an internal culture, right, of empowering the developers, increasing developer productivity. And our job has been to fill in the gaps. Right. right. That, Certain companies sometimes don't have the ability, the technical skills, or the resources to, to fill those gaps. Yep. Uh, so it's been fantastic for us because I think together doing those two things, just grabbing open source by itself, yeah, wouldn't have will not given us the, the yeah. speed that we have today. Yeah. But is 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 putting those pieces together in the right way, create a, a good framework, uh, create a good stack, with the right principles in mind. Yeah. Which is as is our main principle is 
speed to uh, to to production, right? Right. How quickly we can get a service up and running that is properly monitored, secure, exactly. uh, and um, logs and everything, right? It's very yeah. easy to maintain. So let's talk a little bit about that. So. One of the things, obviously, you're getting is agility there, you know, mm -hmm. time to market, you're getting greater security, more eyes on the code. What are some of the benefits, though, for you that you say, I couldn't live without, you know? That I couldn't live without from open source? I mean, yeah. the first one is that uh, there's a lot more talent, right, that is, is willing to help us, right? Uh, yeah. it, I mean, the, the support that we get from some of the communities, right, age-based, for example, right? Yeah. People are, are really quick to answer questions that we might have. Right. Uh, we can we can tap different individuals in our network that know the code base. Right. We can look at the code base and we can get familiarized enough to make sure that we can fix our own problems as well. Yep. So you have to invest in, in, in many different areas, but uh, sometimes is it's better than some of the uh, larger vendors, right? Uh, it's a much more complicated support process. Right. I mean, it's, we we have developed enough experience with our projects that most of the time we can resolve it ourselves. I mean, right. having the sources. A huge plus. Oh, it's huge. It's absolutely enormous. In yeah. fact, it's funny, in the survey that rocketed it from about number eight to number four in terms of priorities this yeah. year. People are really paying much more attention to it. Yeah. Now let's talk about that as well. Obviously one of the things that you've decided to do is contribute back, but you have to be organized to do that. Can you talk a little bit about how you've organized your teams to contribute back to the projects and how you monitor that? Yeah, in, in this case what we did is uh, we, we decided to focus on, on one of the areas, which was just mostly front-end development, right? Yeah. This is an area that is changing very rapidly, right? Yeah. On the server side, things are more, stable. Are more mature yeah. uh, for us, especially when it comes to distributed computing right. uh, and large-scale you know, uh, databases, distributed databases, key value stores. Yeah. But, but the front-end is right now undergoing tremendous change. Yeah. And so, uh, we wanted to participate in that, right? Because we we're making decisions, right, on what technology we're using, right? And we want to be part of the discussion. Absolutely. And so I think and, that and influence it and influence it. And yeah. so that's kind of why uh, we decided to put uh, certain people, right, certain developers that have the ability to to communicate more outside, because you you kind of have to learn, you know, yeah. how to how to uh, publicize your work, how to engage people, how to do, you know how to collaborate with them on a, and and GitHub, right? And so that, that takes time. Yeah, very much so. And so, Elias, if you were advising a company who was starting up and thinking about using open source, what, what would be some of the key things that you'd advise them? First, I think that I think they have to get over the fear, right? That is, is open source is a valid avenue for you to uh, build your, your company and your products on, on top Absolutely. of them, right? I mean, yeah. I think it's safe. Uh, many people are concerned about the legal ramifications and things like that, but. I think we're way past that, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so uh, that, that's my first, my first thing. They just, they just have to go and do it. Yeah. Uh, second, they cannot expect to, uh, to find a solution that's already wrapped up in a box. Here's your gift. Here, here's, yeah. here's this software that's going to solve all your problems. Right. Whether you buy software or whether you use open source, you're going to have to invest a little uh, or, or a lot, depending on how much you want out of that right. investment. Uh, to bring everything together. Yeah. There, there is just no, there's not one answer anywhere. There's no silver yeah. bullet. Yeah. Uh, both proprietary and open source software. But at least if you're developing it on open source software, you own it in yeah. the sense that you can control its destination and you know its roadmap and you can yeah. turn it at the pace and speed you want. Yeah, I mean I think that software, the value of software has changed in many ways. Uh, I, I think it it, software is being is getting cheaper to develop. I think it, it is there's a lot of overhead in, in operating the system, right? Right, right. And all the dependencies and, and the marketing and the support and the yeah. operations power alone, cloud services, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, if, if we were to open source all of the software at HubSpot, it would cost a lot of money for you to try to run all of our infrastructure. Right? Exactly right, and to optimize it, and and optimize manage it at scale, etc. Yeah. I think people underestimate that, so I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. We, we think that that's why we're we're not as concerned about any specific kind of advances in technology we have. We get more by by showing everyone how we build our software. Yeah, the give to get is really worth it. It's really worth. It. I mean, it, you don't lose much. There's yeah. not there's nothing to to uh, to be afraid of uh, that you're going to miss out on. Yeah. Well, let's wrap up by looking at the future. This is all about the future of open source tonight. Everybody in there is going to hear about that. But what, what do you predict will be some of the things that will come down the track in, in open source during this coming year? So one of the things that I'm looking closely at is uh, 
platform as a service, right, as right. infrastructure. I think that uh, we're still in the early stages on how we manage our services yep. in, in companies. And we, we have things like Amazon, there's different, there's different layers yep. right, on, 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 this, on, on building platforms. Yep. You have Amazon, you have something like Google App Engine. Yep. Uh, yep. They're more prescribed, you have something like Heroku. Yep. But uh, the margins are not there. We can't keep on you yep. know, building on top of all these services yep. and make it worthwhile for, for real companies to run their business on. Yep. Yeah, it's too expensive. Uh, and so what we need is uh, open source is going to now start bringing a, a new set of, uh, I see a new wave of, of technologies, right? That I hope stay open source, right? Yeah. That help companies run their own their own platforms, stack effectively. Their own their own stack effectively, yep. right? Yep. Where they can decide whether they go cloud based or they or they uh, use their Do own data center, or, yeah. right? Yep. And so, because we kind of want to standardize, I think this yep. this is, we have such a long way to go in terms of managing uh, large scale. Uh, Web service, you know, you know, service-oriented architecture systems. Yep. So, yep. I, I think that's that's something that uh, I'm paying a lot of attention. I think that the other one would be uh, web application development, right? Yep. In the browser. Yeah. There's that's a lot something. of innovation going on there. There's a lot of innovation. This is this. There's still not one clear winner. You know, yep. we have things like Ember, Backbone, Angular. Yep. Uh, it's still not clear how you how we're going to build the apps in the future. Yeah. And that's that's changing quickly. Because the browsers are moving very fast. Yeah, right? uh, we don't have clear and answers mobile for is mobile. Such a huge yeah. part of it, exactly. Mobile is just like it's clear now to everyone that mobile yeah. is important, but yeah. it's taken a while. But people we don't have the right tools yet. It's absolutely true to to, to build them on top of uh, open source technologies. Right? Yeah, we yep. still kind of uh, prefer the native way yep. of building applications, but uh, mobile has to catch up. There. Uh, uh, HTML, open source will have to catch up. There. Yeah, indeed. So Great. Well, we look forward to reviewing that in a year's time with you, but thanks oh, very much. It's been great <laughs> to have you this evening. Always no a problem. pleasure. No problem. Thank you. Thanks, Elias.